what else did we do yesterday? I got some work done on this pipe. Um, well, we kind of know what we're doing here, I guess. So it's just a female slip fitting, so this end glues onto the pipe. The other side is threaded. So we're not going to actually put any, any fitting in here other than um, a nipple with a, a large washer on it that we can tighten it down and compress this and pull it in. So this is uh, what I got going here is this is basically two pieces right here. This is going to get filled in and glassed on this back side and it'll lock this and so it can't turn. Um, on this side, I don't know if you can see, but there's about a quarter inch gap in there. And I'm going to put a silicone washer in there, a flat washer that's basically about the size of this outline right here, but it'll be tucked inside. And then we'll have a big round stainless washer on this side with a threaded male nipple on the inside. And as you screw that in, it'll draw this all together nice and tight. Um, there'll be sealant underneath this one, thread seal on the threads, and a silicone washer in there. So kind of like three layers of protection. Uh, okay guys, just a quick mock-up here. Uh, stretched out my center line uh, string, represents the center of the shaft right there. Um, roughly position this, it's just on a, a inch and a quarter pad right here, just a foam pad. So. When we laid this out, uh, we basically made it so we'd have a pad probably three quarter inch thick or so on top of this for our bearing to bolt down. And then a little bit of space left for shims so we can get the correct height. We're gonna want some room in there for that. That's pretty critical. Um, so right now this is actually sitting about a quarter inch high from where it needs to be. So super duper happy. This is actually the first layer of our shaft alley cover. The one underneath is just to reinforce this area where this, this hatch is. And the way that we'll secure this hatch is really quite simple. Um, same design that we have on the fishtail. It's just uh, the hatch will come out about to here and then you'll have your second layer on top. There's a single bolt on the inside. I believe we used a three quarter inch bolt mm -hmm. on there. Yep. And then um, you have a, a cross piece, a draw bar that goes across. And there's this two little mounts down here that, that hold it in place, keep it from dropping down. It's short enough that you can slip it in. And then you put it up underneath one side and then you slide it over and then it'll hold itself in place. So it's basically just like two loose fitting clips right here that, that keep it from falling down into the bilge or into the shaft alley. Um, it's not important that it's tight, it can rattle around. And then in the center of it, you have a nut and your single bolt from your hatch goes in that nut, you tighten it down. There's gaskets on it, of course, so it doesn't leak. And it's just a really simple way. Um, that hatch will suck down tight, it'll suck down evenly. It won't drip a drop. Uh, we've had the one on the fishtail like that, well, for 15 plus years now, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, never leaked any. You can fill that up with water and come back a month later and it's at the same level. So, Yeah, and so our clearance is fine here. We've got plenty of room. We're going to offset this just a little bit in order to get our draw bar centered in the middle. It's not going to hurt anything, obviously. We made these hatches big enough that you could get in here and comfortably service things. So we'll just probably kick this back a inch and a half or two inches off center and no problem. Yeah. The it's nice thing good. about the draw bar is like I say is that when you need to get in here you just remove that and slip it out, set it aside and then you have full access to everything you can get in here and do whatever. And they're pretty low profile overall like if you compare it to a Freeman hatch or something there's like a lot of uh, linkage or whatever you call it all the mm -hmm. all the critical components the dogs and stuff on the underside of it So that would never work in this application No, and Freeman hatch unless it's like I, I don't even know if they well I know that they make manhole covers that are steel and they I believe they have them in stainless too mm -hmm. But I don't think that the the dog type hatches like we have on the fishtail 
the aluminum ones, I don't think that those come in stainless steel. And so if you put aluminum down here, you will have problems with it. Yep. It's just a matter of how many years down the road. Yeah, like inside the shaft alley, it's always going to be a damp environment. Mm -hmm. So yeah, get that build up and, and it just kind of... You get salt water built up, it gets in the, the pores of the casting, the aluminum casting, it starts to corrode and you know, it just, it turns nasty after a while. Yeah. You can't do anything about it. You can keep mm -hmm. it clean, but that's it. Helps if you keep it flush against the edge. Okay, just marking this out. I'll just hit this real lightly with the grinder because this stuff, this will get scarfed in a heartbeat by one of those flap discs. Actually, it seems like it kind of wants to pull in there. So I'm just gonna knock about half of this off. I'll just come in there with a piece of sandpaper. Finish rounding it off. And so uh, these are gonna be positioned down. These are actually um, like the bottom layer, then there'll be two layers on top. These are just going to help reinforce everything. So, you want to round these off and laminate these beforehand. And uh, if we just try to laminate around a sharp edge like this, it just it won't happen. It'll just be a big, huge mess and be frustrating. You have to radius stuff to get good results or your fabric will just flow, it won't stick to one side or the other. Put a nice little, uh, well probably even like a, what, 3 8 inch radius is enough I think. Yeah. Um, half inch is better. That's about what these will be, so, something like that. My mark is a 3 quarter inch but I won't quite hit that hole width right there. So it'll be somewhere just around a half inch, I think. Which is funny. Oh, that doesn't work very good. So we'll have three inspection hatches, two in the aft hold, and one in the forward hold. This is a very aft one that will go over the um, stuffing box and allow us to tighten it up and maintain it. And the other two will just be over the top of the bearings. So this is kind of the stuff that makes these builds kind of drag out and last a long time. A lot of the work goes real fast, the big work. Laying up panels and putting bulkheads and stuff like that, but there's so many small details too. Yeah, and if Just you don't take the time to do them properly, then they won't last break down and, and cause you a grief later. Yes, very true. Um, hopefully, hopefully we're doing things the way that we won't have to modify them later. But most of the stuff we've, we've more or less done before on the fishtail on um, just a smaller scale, similar kind of methods maybe different materials, but plywood, a substrate instead of foam, but still fiberglass over it. And, uh, and we've had great results over there. We don't see any kind of stuff breaking down. So we're just following that same kind of general procedure and we should have good results here too.
so the hatch is kicked off. It's all hardened up. And it looks pretty good. Yeah, we'll send this to the trimmer. He'll get it cleaned up. Going to have to uh, make a little adjustment to the notch that it fits in in the shaft alley stringers. Uh, we kind of, I guess we changed course. We didn't really take into consideration the laminate on the bottom. At first we were just going to, I don't know what we're going to, what were we going to do? Just, we were just going to, I guess we were just going to inset them in between the stringers yeah. and then we decided to actually notch them and, mm -hmm. and physically integrate them in instead of just having them slipped in between the stringers and tabbed in. And so, uh, originally I just cut it for, it's about an inch and a quarter thickness, one layer laminate. And so now this is basically an inch and a half now. So this is the bottom. Um, we're looking at this upside down. So I'll just go in here, I'll get this trimmed up. A uh, little bit of cleanup on the inside, just a few little lumps from where the fabric overlapped. Um, you pretty much have to put relief cuts in it and wrap it. Turned out great, Matt did a fabulous job on it. And uh, yeah, this is a very, a very rigid structure now. Just a quick clean up on this piece, <clears throat> trim the edges, brand them flush, same thing with this side here, that took like 10 minutes, uh, yeah I just got to come in here and trim this a little bit so this top is flush with the, with the stringer right here, but uh, looks good. So I got this trimmed. Uh, I don't want to say I went a little bit too deep, but it's good. It's just down a, a, a nudge there, but this is going to get puttied in anyways, so it's actually just about right. Looks real good. If you guys are curious how strong this is now, this is how strong this is now. So this isn't even like, this is about an inch and a half by maybe two and a half inches right there about four on the top same on both sides that's how strong this is i'm standing on that with one foot i don't even feel it move under me it moves like maybe a eighth tops that's not even tied into this or anything. That's how strong that is. When you laminate both sides of that foam, it turns into a very, very rigid structure quickly. Yeah, that was pretty impressive. Yeah. So I think today's goal is to actually get these sumps uh, glued into place and, and just some light tabbing. Got a lot of grinding ahead of us start fairing out the, the edges and everything. Quite a bit grinding ahead of us of that uh, A little bit. Just yeah, that PVA really does the trick It's that tape. Yeah, this has worked out well. I think we can probably get another one out of this without retaping. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Maybe just a corner. Yeah. I mean, it's no big deal if the PVA is loose or a little bit rough on here. Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you. 
that's the most stuck down, right? That's all right. Tape's cheap, I guess, and it just takes a few minutes, right? There we go. And now we have a very nice angle to tie in. So that looks good. Yeah. Okay, so we're down in the hold now. As you can see, we have the makings of a sump. Yeah, this worked out really good. So we just pulled the part off the one side of the mold and that also had the front of the sump. And then opposite end for the, the back side. So we have the wall built into that. And we'll be able to use it and do the same thing on this side. It's all the same basically. And between the two sumps, it's 50 gallons. So this is basically 25 gallons on each side. It's more than enough in reality. Uh, for salmon, we'll be doing RSW. It doesn't matter. For crab, you're pumping in salt water continuously. Sumps don't matter. Really, this is just for ease of cleanup. When you wash down, everything goes into the sump, you can pump it out. You don't have a, a flat surface and a pool of water that you're trying to, to suck the water out of, um, no matter how good of a pump or, you know, how low it can go removing water, you still end up with, with a bunch of, a layer of water there. Super annoying when you're trying to clean a, a fish hole or something. Um, so this is primarily for when we're just icing fish and it allow the meltwater a place to go, the gurry a place to go. It can collect, you can pump it out throughout the day. So it's fine, it'll serve its purpose just fine. So that's where we're at. Uh, today we're gonna get these glued in. We'll get them glued down to the center supports. We'll get them tabbed in to the, the side of the stringer right here. And then we'll just We'll cut a couple of holes, probably maybe three down here that we can pour foam into. Uh, we'll make a, a quick, uh, kind of a, a quick backing block that we can just drop in here, just basically like some plywood. This is too wide, I think. But essentially just a piece that we can put down here. We'll have a couple of uprights on it and a couple of braces going down so we can pour the foam in and then just drop that down and clamp it. That will close off those holes. Extra foam should just expand uh, towards the back here and up the side, which is what we want. And that'll prevent that foam from bowing this stuff. It'll push this, mm -hmm. this thin laminate around. Yeah, you can see it kind of pushes with the yeah, there's, force. It's got a lot of flex to it, so we don't want that just pushing it up. So we'll get that built and then, like I say, we'll get these glued in and we'll start filling the rest of the cavity. It should be pretty easy to see. You can see the foam through there right now and you can definitely see where it's touching against it. So we'll be able to visually see if there's some spots we miss. We'll just make another hole, pour some foam in there. Yeah, nice. That's going to give us a good bond. That foam will bond to the underside of this, lock it in good. Good plan. Plan of attack. Yep, we'll see how it works, but I'm fairly confident in it. Right 
Nice. Mm-hmm. So you need to uh, grab that brush and we'll just scrape that right, right quick. No, no, it's fine. We'll we'll just uh, put the other two down. Okay. And then we'll just level it out. Well, big moment. We're on the Emerald Isle. Yeah, making some progress. Is that about like being handed or a touch thicker? A little bit more like you have on the end right there. In she over. Yep. All right, you then. Just as easy as that. thing come back in here a little later just put a little CSM across this just to give it a little extra strength that putty is gonna be fine though be plenty go over these seams right here on this back side lock these two together and uh, and then we can poke a few holes in this and Start pouring some foam again. Get our little form made to hold this flat. Maybe something against this back too so it doesn't try and do anything weird. That foam comes up around this corner and expands. We don't want it pushing our wall out and having an ugly looking sump. Can't have an ugly sump, man. Nope. Wouldn't be right. And meanwhile, I guess we'll get this trimmed up. You can kind of see how that will dress that up there. Tie it together. It'll be on the inside like that. If you haven't yet figured it out, we're gluing in our positive angle chunks to uh, make the transition between our sumps and the old glass. So after we get these glued on and they harden up, we can kind of fair out the edge on the sump side and we'll wrap fiberglass from the old down into the sump. Yeah, pretty exciting. Um, finally getting this tied in. After we get this side all done and set, we'll just match the other side as far as height off of the uh, shaft alley covers. We want them to be the same, even though the old skin is completely different. But this establishes kind of our, our set point for when we do the rest. So that should work out pretty good. We'll get them Pretty close. Um, there'll be some low spots over here for sure on this side. It's kind of a bit of a, a pit. Uh, the uh, foam was a little thinner over on the starboard side compared to the support side. But like we say, no matter. Um, the important part is that we just match basically just this corner right here for heights. Over here doesn't matter as much. When we go to redo this, we'll just cut it in here somewhere and, and our sub should be about the same height that way. So I'm just using some little stainless screws to pull this in. Um, if there's any spots that look like they need pulled in a bit, I can just poke a hole with the drill and, and screw these in. These should come out. Fingers crossed. They should. Yeah, they'll come out. <laughs> if you don't, the grinder will take care of them. <laughs> Oh, 
So I basically set this on a string line and drilled these holes beforehand to register these so we wouldn't be fiddling around later. So it's a lot easier that way with fiberglass. You have just enough space to get your impact driver in that sun, too. Yep. So anywhere in here that I don't see it squeeze out, I'll just come back and poke a hole and add a screw. So go heavy. Yeah, I don't know. Get heavy now. There we go. Pretty soon that'll like I said, grind that off just to make a smooth transition and we'll slap some glass over it. That will be exciting. So bring you guys back after a while.